Urban Farmer and we're at D-Town Farm today. I'm Naomi, also an urban farmer here in Detroit. And today we brought someone to talk to you guys about making compost. Aziza is the compost master, so she will definitely teach you all that you need to know to begin composting. Uh, we're going to do two different piles here. We already have a pile that's been here for uh, a few weeks already. It's got a variety of uh, vegetable scraps and just like plant debris and just randomness, wood chips and whatnot, twigs that we have had on the farm. Um, so this one's been sitting for a little bit already. Now, this soil, like if we were to sip this, uh, this compost, it would be a pretty black mixture. Uh, and, and right now there's like some chunks of like wood chips and whatnot in there. It's very small, but it breaks apart pretty easily because it's been surrounded by moisture and heat. Um, but in here, since this is a stale compost pile, meaning that we layered it with with nitrogen and with, the, with carbon, so our, our greens and browns. So we had the, the food scraps and then like grass clippings and plant clippings, whatever we have left around. And then we layered that with some soil that we had left over and some leaves um, and cardboard. And we just did that little lasagna mixture. And then it gave us this, which is a pretty rich soil. It has a very beautiful color, no doubt. But the thing about this pile, which is great, if you don't have a lot of time to invest in your compost pile, this is totally okay to do. You just want to be careful what seeds you put in there. They end up staying intact and they just end up shooting out new plants. So that thistle, that bindweed, or that grass that keeps coming back, that's frustrating for you. It's, uh, it's not going to be eliminated with just this compost pile. You have to actively turn it to get that oxygen incorporated in. So that's the stale pile that's been sitting a few weeks. It still has a lot of nutrients in it, but you're just gonna have to weed it a little bit more, which is okay. So it just depends on what you, uh, what your time is. Now, if you want a hot pile that eliminates annual uh, weed seeds and perennial weed seeds, then you're gonna wanna do a hot pile. So this right here, this, this glorious pile of, of scraps that I'm standing on, uh, I just picked some mint that was in one of our echinacea beds up front and one of our front beds. And these are some uh, watermelon plants and some, uh, a couple perennial weeds uh, and uh, some annual weeds here. And some of them, they do have seed pods, but I'm not going to worry about that too much because we're going to get this freaking hot. So over here, I have some leek scraps and some, uh, so it's just like the root system. These leaf tops, that's going to break down really quick. Uh, tons of nitrogen in these. Um, but then we have some leaf scraps right here. Um, this is going to supply our carbon. Um, so we have our nitrogen, our greens, and then we have our carbon, the, our browns. Um, and then we have some more weed scraps like I was talking about. There are some perennial weeds in here. Some of the weeds have gone to seed. Their seed is mature. So since we're putting mature seed into this pile, it's important that we make this compost pile hot. If we do not make this compo compost pile hot, that means that next year when we put introduce this compost into our beds, that we're gonna keep getting the amaranth or the pig weed that's coming up, the quack grass, uh, the lady's thumb, all of these weeds are just gonna come back. So we just gotta get the seed hot, uh, the, the compost hot, so it'll cook it all. Um, we're gonna get it real hot. So let's go ahead and layer this. I have my green here on the bottom. Now, with this stale compost pile that's been sitting for a while, I'm just gonna combine it in this new hot pile um, because that's really the results we want on this farm. Um, so yeah, let's, let me go ahead and take a shovel full of this. And this already has some scraps in it that hasn't really broken down. So I feel okay bringing this pile over here because it's, it's, it's still in the process of being complete. Um, so just like take a good amount. And this has so much microbial life in it already. It's kind of giving you like a head start. If you've ever made bread like from a, a, a sourdough starter or anything like that, this would be like using an old starter to, to get your ferment going. Um, for those of you that ferment, um, so that's a nice little layer of some, some debris right there. Add some of these weeds that are quite dusty right now. Oh, pollen. And then these leaves. And ideally, I know it's going to rain here in the next few days, but ideally, 
if you have a water hose or uh, something near you to help, you want to water along the way just so that your compost pile isn't dry. You need moisture. You don't want it sopping wet. The rule is if like you can squeeze a, a fistful of compost and a few water droplets are coming out, then that's good. But if you're getting like a stream, your compost pile is too wet, it's going to get uh, anaerobic, it's going to start to smell, and your neighbors aren't going to like you very much. Um, so watering along just to, to give it a little bit of moisture. But yeah, so that's the, the layer. We have green on the bottom, and then we have some of the old compost, and then we have some more green right here. And then we have our carbon, the leaves. Then I'm gonna add some more of this old, older compost pile, which is still pretty moist. It's actually got a lot of branches in it, so I'm just gonna pick this up. Continue to water if you had your hose. I'm going to add a little more. And when I do a pile, I like to finish leaving some older compost on top. Um, I, I just feel like the, having that black on top, like black is a color that absorbs a lot more of the sunlight. Um, it's, I feel like it's just going to help you heat your pile up a little bit faster especially since it's getting colder now but that's that's pretty much how you build a, a compost pile one of the things i wanted to mention uh before i let you all go is that when in the city it is important just any in the rural in the rural area this will be important too um but just in the city it would be more of an issue uh our, our rodents just any type of pest so raccoons possums uh groundhogs they will get they will love your compost so you'll have some fat ass critters can i say that Okay, you have some fat ass critters that will come to your pile and that's not, that's not the mess that you want. Your neighbors will not be fans of this. So what you would like to do is get half inch or quarter inch uh, hardware cloth or chicken wire and you want the, the smaller stuff because if you think about a mouse, like a mouse uh, mice, their their rib cage, their bones, they just kind of concave. They kind of they just kind of go in. So if you want the quarter inch, uh, this one's a half inch right here, um, and this is our sifter. But if you surrounded your pile with this like all around four corners, like the, the, all the walls, all the sides covered, and then you even want to cover the top of it and then create a latch so that even uh, a, a raccoon cannot get in there. But this is just going to protect your bin a lot more and uh, just really decrease those pest issues. Because uh, if, you, if you do not manage your pests, then you're going to have an issue with rodents and that's going to create issues for your neighborhood and nobody wants to be a bad neighbor. So please keep that in mind. Be considerate. If you need any tips on like how to build a, a proper setup for your for your residential, for your for your home, hit us up, let us know. We would love to help people make their neighborhoods better. All right, peace.